Good day and good day and welcome to you on a funky uh, daily Bible commentation. Today's commentation is on Esther in the Greek chapter 9. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different components to the commentation here for Esther chapter 9 in the Greek. So number 1. End of Esther's prayer and change of attire. After three days of fervent prayer, Esther ends her prayers puts away her mourning garments, and adorns herself in glorious apparel. She calls upon God, the beholder and savior of all things. Esther's entrance before the king. Number two. Esther, adorned and accompanied by two maids, leans on one and has the other bear up her train. Train of the dress. So cool. Despite her radiant appearance, uh, her heart is anguish due to fear. She passes through all the doors and stands before the king who is seated at his royal throne. Adorned with majestic robes gathering with gold and precious stones, the king looks fiercely upon her and causes Esther to faint and bow herself. Number three, God's intervention and the king's compassion. God changes the spirit of the king to mildness. In fear, the king leaps from his throne, takes Esther in his arms, and comforts her with loving words, assuring that she will not die. The king lifts up his golden scepter, embraces her, and invites her to speak. Number four, Esther's dialogue with the king. Esther describes how she saw the king as an angel of God, which troubled her heart. She praises the king's wonderful and gracious uh, countenance. As she speaks, she falls down and faints, uh, and uh, she falls down from faintness, sorry, causing the king and his servants to be troubled. Number five. The king's offer and Esther's request. The king offers Esther anything she desires up, up to half the kingdom. Esther, in response, invites the king and Haman to a banquet uh, that she has prepared that day. Number six, Haman's reaction and plan for Mordecai's gallows. Haman, elated by the king's invitation, is filled with indignation when she sees Mordecai at the king's gate, not showing him respect. Haman, despite refraining in the moment, decides to build gallows of 50 cubits high to request the king for Mordecai's hanging. Haman's friends and wife advise him to enjoy the banquet and then suggest Mordecai's execution on the gallows. This chapter sets a stage of a critical turn of events, with Esther's invitation, Haman's rising frustration, and the impending banquet. The tension between Haman and Mordecai intensifies, foreshadowing the unfolding drama uh, in the subsequent chapters. I think, honestly, Esther would make a really, really good Shakespearean play. (laughs) Which is why, you know, Shakespeare probably was somewhat forcefully involved in, uh, uh, in, in the writing of the KJV, if I got that correct. So we'll move into Esther in the Greek, chapter 9. And upon the third day, verse 1, when she had ended her prayer, she laid away her mourning garments and put on the glorious apparel. And being gloriously adorned after she called upon God, who is the beholder and savior of all things, she took two maids with her. And upon the one she leaned, as carrying herself daintily, and the other followed, bearing up her train. And she was ready through the perfection of her beauty and the countenance of a cheerful and very amiable But her heart was in anguish for fear. Then having passed through all the doors, she stood before the king, who sat upon his royal throne, and was clothed with all his royal robes of majesty, all glittering with gold and precious stones, and he was very dreadful. Then lifting up the countenance that shone with majesty, he looked very fiercely upon her, and the queen fell down, and was pale, and fainted, and bowed uh, herself upon the head of the maid that went before her. Then God changed the spirit of the king into mildness, who, in a fear, leaped from his throne and took her in his arms, till she came to herself again and comforted her with loving words and said unto her, Esther, what is the matter? I am thy brother, be of good cheer. Thou shalt not die. Thou, uh, though our, our, our commandment, be general. Come near. Verse 11. And so beheld up his golden scepter and laid it upon her neck and embraced her and said, Speak unto me. Then said she unto him, I saw thee, my Lord, as an angel of God, and my heart was troubled for the fear of thy majesty, for thou art 
uh, Lord with a lowercase, and thy countenance is full of grace. And as she was speaking, she fell down for faintness. Then the king was troubled, and all his servants comforted her. Then, uh, it's weird, it actually skips 18, here it goes, 17, 18, 19. This is on the apocrypha.org where I read this. Anyways, so we go from 16 <laughs> to 19. That's not cool. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be even given unto thee and half the kingdom. And Esther answered, It seemed good unto the king. Let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet, and Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted unto thee. And what is thy request? Even to half thy kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, verse 24, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my, part, my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king hath said. Then went Haman from that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman re refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, and Zeresh his wife. Verse 27, And Haman told of the glory of the riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced in above the princes and the servant of the and the servants of the king Haman said moreover yea Esther the queen did let no man come in uh, with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but thy, but myself and tomorrow uh, to morrow separated as two words which is cool to morrow on the morrow Am I invited unto her also with the king? Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then he said, Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged uh, thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. So let us move into prayer. I don't know if you guys know the rest of the story. It's a big turn of events. but Heavenly Father, Abba, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Holy Spirit, we come before you as Esther, adorned not with just royal garments, but with the humility and fear that she displayed before the king. Father, the same fear that was that was being discussed with the uh, doors being closed, God, in my morning devotional before doing this, um, the fear, this, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the honorable, holy spirit of fear, of the Lord, we pray for that, God, that we would just revere you and we would obey you, God, in that. Esther, despite her fear, approached the king with a trusting heart, and you, Yeshua, and, oh, and your mercy changed the spirit of the king we see in the passage of the miraculous transformation wherein the king's fierceness turned to mildness you O god abba father are the beholder and savior of all things yeshua and in your divine providence you orchestrated a moment of grace for esther holy spirit the king's golden scepter scepter extended toward her signifying mercy and acceptance lord yeshua just as you softened the heart of king Azurius, we pray for your divine intervention in our lives. Change the hearts of those who may oppose us, and let your favor surround us like a shield, Yeshua, the blood of Jesus. Esther's plea was not for herself alone. She desired the presence of the king and Haman at a banquet. Grant us, too, the courage to present our request before you. May our petitions be in alignment with your will, and may your favor rest upon us. As we read further, we sense the growing uh, animosity in Haman's heart. Despite his wealth and, po and position, the sight of Mordecai not bowing to him brought ang anger. Haman, blinded by pride, sought to build the gallows to hang Mordecai. 
Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, in times of frustration and resentment, teach us humility, Holy Spirit. Help us to see beyond our personal desires and agendas, guiding us to seek reconciliation rather than revenge. Right? Oh my goodness. Forgive others as you, you yourself desire to be forgiven. Lord, there are so many things here. But we just need to love our, our so-called enemies and remember that they're not our enemies. <sighs> Are you going to save all people, God? But the the enemies are spiritual, God. We pray for your guidance, Lord. As we navigate the complexities of relationships, may our actions be grounded in love and understanding, reflecting the transformative power of your grace, Yeshua. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So let us finish with a song based on today's reading of Esther in the chapter 9 in the Greek. It's titled, Esther's Plea in Haman's Scheme. Upon the third day, verse 1, Esther arose, from prayers deep, her mourning clothes she disposed. Gloriously adorned, she called on God's name, two maids by her side, as she entered the game. Esther, Esther, before the king so grand, in royal robes before him she stand. The king, once fierce, now with a softened decree, Esther's plea, an unfolding mystery. Through doors and chambers to the throne she draw near, the king in majesty, all his re regalia clear, his countenance a fearsome sight. Esther fell pale, trembling in the royal light. Esther, Esther, before the king so grand, in royal robes before him she'd stand. The king once fierce, now with softened decree, Esther's plea, an unfolding mystery. God hand upon the king's spirit, a gentle change. From the throne he leaped in fear so strange. I am thy brother, be of good cheer. Comforted by loving words, the king drew near. The golden scepter, a symbol of grace, Esther spoke of visions of a majestic face. Troubled and faint, she fell to the ground. The king and his servant, his concern, were bound. Esther, Esther, before the king so grand, in royal robes before him she'd stand. The king once fierce, now with softened decree, Esther's plea in unfolding mystery. A banquet prepared, an invitation extended, Haman full of pride, his riches he boasted. Yet Mordecai's stature at the king's gate, a, th a thorn in Haman's side, breeding revengeful hate. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Bye for now.